Hey guys, it's me, Zell, and we are here with another episode of Andor. <laughs> I almost said Mandalorian, but Andor, episode 12. That means the last episode of season one. Uh, episode's called Rick's Road. I'm sure we'll figure that out. They usually have the episode title reference something significant in the episode. But my guess is obviously we're going to see some, mm, I'm sure we're gonna leave on some cliffhangers for sure, but I think it's setting it up for Cassian to come back to Ferex to see his mother off in her funeral, which means as they've expected, ISB will be there and not just ISB. I think our friend guy, I keep forgetting his name, the corporate ex-corporate officer that's obsessed with him. I think we're just gonna have a lot of people converge into this area. I don't know, I have mixed feelings on if Luthen and his folks will be there. I mean, we know of at least a couple. Anyways, regardless, speculating and assuming, but that he's gonna go back to Ferrix. And I'm curious if they're gonna show anything about Mon Mothma. Maybe her d daughter is getting set up finally. We'll see. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm excited. Hope you are too. So let's get to it. Man, she does that role so well. Oh, yeah. Did his dad go bye bye? Okay, this bro's about to do something that I'm not sure I like. Yeah, look at that. Do you know what that face reminds me of? Somebody that's like gonna do a suicide mission. You're gambling again. Nonsense. And here, in Coruscant. It's a lie. It's total fantasy. Who's telling you this? Please. No, I'm serious. Heron, please. Who's saying this? Just don't. Right she's now, she's it making it seem like that's where the money's going. Change enough for one night. You can't live without a casino, fine. You go I to Canto I've kept my promise. Keep your voice down. I can't hear you. Mmm, something's... It's smart. I mean, she already knows her marriage is rough, but she's... I feel like she's saying this to protect herself. You know what? I don't make this anymore. Because I'd rather sell you a brand new system at ten times the price. I mean, how many we got? Sixty? Seventy? Just sitting there. Five hundred credits each. Wow. People... Don't look down the way they should. Aww. Just need to get this cleaned up before Marvel finds us doing this in the house. <laughs> Where's Mix? He's Where is she? So much. Cass. Where is she? Remember this. Freedom is a pure idea. It occurs spontaneously. So he is there watching. And without instruction, One single thing will break the siege. Remember this. Try. Oh, Nemec. You're missing the point. Today was about wiping the taste of Aldani from the Emperor's mouth. I keep forgetting that this is all because of the Emperor's. Ooh, scary. Friend. Oh. I wanted her to live with me. I know. I love her. I came together. She told me. I told her I was coming back. Stop. I never should have left that morning. Stop. Tell him none of this is his fault. It was already burning. He's just the first spark of the fire. Tell him he knows everything he needs to know and feels everything he needs to feel. Tell him I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. There they are. The gang's all here. Yeah, that's more than 40%. 
40 people. <laughs> Because I want you to go on. I've been sleeping. I've been turning away from the truth I wanted not to face. It wants to stay. Ugh, the energy. You can feel. The Empire is a disease that thrives in darkness. It is never more alive than when we sleep. But I'll uh -oh. tell you this. Everyone's gonna blast off. Brasso, oh, please not again. you. I'd wake up early and be fighting these bastards. <laughs> he pissed. From the start. Don't be mean to Emo. <laughs> I dreamt you came back. Pigs. gonna throw it it's like a pipe bomb isn't it oh oh okay much better than I thought some you know are they dipping Come or are on, they guys. just losing their tracks or... oh get it going sir you're no, no, not coming not today baby i no, no, never got to see you mm -hmm. take care of bigs until i get there i'm counting on you you always say that <laughs> And you always come through. He'll find us. Kasim will find us. I will. Everyone's so in pain in different ways. He's so small. That's why she was worried, because her daughter was into it. Prepare for evac. Full stealth. He's on it, isn't he? Dude, how? You came here to kill me, didn't you? Mm, Call down. It'll make it easy. He doesn't want to be kill chased. Me. Or take me in. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I like 
like it and don't like it. Hey, are those those are the parts they made? <gasps> oh this is the beginning. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of the Death Star. So they were making these very important parts. Yep. Yep. Wow. I mean, we knew those were really important parts and that's why it makes sense they're making a gazillion of them to like make that massive, massive planet size ship. Yeah, so they made it this far. Yeah, because again, Rogue One, they were getting the plans to find the weakness to destroy it. The plans were already in existence. They were already this far ahead of it. Where, what planet was that by? that they were building the Death Star? Like, cause you would obviously see that being made. And how do they prevent people, other people from like not seeing it, ships like coming? I know they could probably block hyperlanes or whatever, but, and I guess they just kill whoever breaks the rules. Um, but anyways, yeah, really good episode. Very powerful and moving speech by Marva and very fitting. I'm so grateful that the kid did not suicide. I, it was just the way he was looking, you know, the way it was portraying. It was really good acting. It was like, because it was like emptiness it was pain sadness and emptiness at the same time and like obviously anger um but luckily he was just putting it all out there i guess that's the thing like he he didn't want to necessarily give up his life but he's like if it happens i'm willing to risk it um so i'm grateful for that i'm grateful that brasso stayed alive and kudos for like constantly looking out like just kudos for all the town of ferrix in general most people outside of few people as we saw sticking together and fighting for each other and keeping an eye out and caring about one another that's like a town a family a community which is really nice to see yeah so we're left here with you know kudos the balls on Cassian to go and confront Luthen being like you came here to kill me huh well here I am I think he was at that point where he's like one he doesn't want to be chased two he's kind of like He's like, I know I got all my friends, the people I care about, really like out and my mom's dead. So what else do I have? You know, he's kind of that kind of person, but it also proves to Luthen in that moment. He's willing, he's like, take me in or kill me now. But he he sees what he's willing to risk and fight for. And that, that kind of proves in that moment that he wouldn't have given him up. He's like, you could just kill me because I'm not going to give up any information. Like he could have easily, he knew why. And he's like, I get it, but I'm not. So I think that was just another proof to Luthen of Cassian's character and his value, like knowing what he got out of and escaped and that he got in there and tricked him. He's like, all right, I see it again, the asset. And, um, and I really liked that they did the Nemec. They made it him narrate it. I don't know for sure if it was just, if it was a voice journal or if it was just for our sake of him narrating and like what Cassian was hearing in his mind. But I love that. That was also a powerful message. And I think it was just thing after thing, both Nemec's message, you know, growing fond of him and then the people of Ferrix and then what his mom, his family cared about and all the people he cares about, seeing them fight against this oppression, what happened to Bix. These are all things more that kind of drive An oh, just Anakin, drive Cassian to want to join the rebellion, have something to fight for. I think, if anything, like just Marva, his mom's message, what she cared for, and she even said that with that little goodbye message that Brasso shared with her, shared with him that she left. It was basically saying she's like, it's not your fault. You know, this was already happening, and I know someday you will do the fight. I know you're capable of fighting you know and i think he knows all of those things subtly and gosh like he's just a really like again the whole show was very well acted everyone played their character to a t played all that even like bix they showed her like it wasn't easy she was like oh you know she's like psychological trauma like she didn't right away register or believe that Cassian was actually there and then she's like oh they're gonna be mad if we leave and she was just so like broken and that she was slowly coming to but she had she had remnants with like the funeral the familiar music and the the saying sky and stone or stone and sky um which is really beautiful um and then that interesting as I kind of felt like I feel like it they're like subtly doing it Cyril has this fascination with Ice Bee Woman supervisor facing her name. Anyways, he had, oh, De Daedra? 
He has this fascination with her and it's not quite creepy. It can definitely go on that creepy side, but he did come. I mean, he came for Cassian, obviously, but he's also like, I see you and now I'm trying to protect you because I um, not envy you. What's the word? He respects her or he admires her. Um, but I think there is a little bit of an attraction there. Um, and I think she felt a little bit more like, oh, I guess this guy is not a complete joke because he did sacrifice and he showed up a little bit. She's like a little bit creepy that he followed me, but also a little bit, you know, she's like grateful that he just saved her butt there and got her out of that situation. And she was like really shooken up. Like she did that really good. Like you wouldn't think an ISB, ISB supervisor would be, but she's like, it showed the humanity moment where she's just like, this did not go according to plan. And she got caught up and could be easily been taken out. Um, and then the whole Mon Mothma thing, you know, really interesting and creative, smart play to do that whole potentially tricking them that any money that may be missing, that holes they see, could be because of his gambling, right? And I think that was a good cover. They were believing it enough, right? But then she still, she still had to do that protective and again it's less it's less of a bad not bad thing it's less of a problem i guess because the daughter herself has been training for this and is consenting and it's something she wants right even though obviously at that age are you in the mindset to know what's best for yourself obviously debatable and clearly there's a cultural difference and clearly there's debate there but again it's not like it's forced in technically he did say it's just a meeting i'm not asking for betrothal i don't know if he necessarily knew her daughter was like already part of that club and training for it but that was an interesting thing that i i thought it was smart of them to highlight that she was already training and learning about that aspect of it so even though they're wanting to retire that part of their culture um yeah so it's quite a interesting dynamic we're seeing play out so we had the luthan business oh yeah and obviously we saw the other kigor keegan craig krager krager <laughs> the other rebellion leader guy showing that everyone was killed as we expect expected they didn't have to show us they were just kind of telling us there it was like not really relevant to the story and i kind of appreciated that it was it was a good like hey we didn't forget about this but there you have it so it's going to be interesting next season i'm guessing we're going to see a little bit more play and cooperation between luthan and cassian you know doing this rebellion business working alongside saw i imagine because i kind of built up this understanding and you know, relationship. I'm curious if they, if we, if he is going to go back and see Grasso, Bimo, Bix, you know, all those folks, you know, if, if he, if that is going to be the last time that he sees them, um, or if he's going to be fighting this rebellion and never makes it back to them in time because he makes that last ultimate sacrifice, which we know will happen. I think that was everything. I think they wrapped it up pretty nicely. It kind of concluded as I expected. I was pleased that we didn't lose as many people you know, luckily we didn't lose like, you know, his close friends, um, but we obviously lost some other people that were helping them. They made that sacrifice. It's an understanding that in a rebellion and a war, there will be lives lost. So yeah, overall, and or season one, very well done. As we all know, the first couple episodes, the first three, a slow burn, a slow build for the show in general, but Again, it's the world building, it's the character introduction. It's the, like, I'm sure if we go back and watch it, we'll have a new appreciation for it. Just seeing that the characters in like their element in like their before the chaos, right? Um, and then there's like conflict after conflict, building building it up all this, really good. I think this was actually one of my top episodes because I really liked this inspirational messages, both from Nemec and from Marva. I liked the coming together and them fighting. Um, similar, I think my top episode is still the prison break um, because again, I love people coming together and them escaping and getting their freedom. It was just a really interesting play and concept in this unique prison situation. Yeah, and obviously the heist was cool. So all like those, uh, the end episode of each of those like blocks, you know, makes sense. They're all like the climax things and all the episodes that lead up to them have great moments themselves. There's character building and development and um, setting up for these big moments. They're a necessity. They're important. Um, so Andor, great job. Good music, acting great all around. The story, writing, 
of these dialogue scenes was really great. They really, and all the sound effects obviously really playing into like, the tones are very like, setting of the emotion and theme like the subtleness of the band was like not like generally not like the sharpness you will get sometimes in those instruments it was more like a a fog a mist over top of the earth which is kind of like the people coming in to have the funeral and stuff so that was really beautiful the s significance of the anvil for their bell, their ringing of time, and also symbolic and signifying fighting back, but also unity and representing Ferrix and the people. Everyone had a part to play in the community. They all had their strengths, even a small thing, such so as playing the anvil or playing the music to build up that, to standing around and supporting them in that moment, or, you know, obviously the ship stuff, like more making stuff like fighting in the battle. Like every person had their part to play in their own way. But yeah, I'm happy. The show really left me with good feelings. It felt like quality, right? Like it wasn't just like entertainment like I've gotten with a lot of recent media in general. This show in itself, Star Wars and outside of Star Wars was like a quality, good piece, food to chew on. It was just, there's a lot, there's a lot of sustenance there and I appreciate it. It's not like a junk food where you enjoy it but then it burns through you really fast. It's like a good quality stew that you can sit there and taste different elements. So anyways, that's enough <laughs> metaphors for me. I could go on and on. Fun show, good show. I enjoyed it, hope you enjoyed it. And I appreciate you being here. I hope you enjoyed your ride, watching my review and reactions along with me. We have more st content to come. That might be the end of Andor, but we have Willow coming out next week, very soon. I will be watching that. We of course have the Bad Batch coming up. We have the future of Ahsoka down the road, the Acolyte, other things I'm probably forgetting, but I'm loving I'm loving the stuff and I'm excited for the future of this stuff that we're gonna have produced. I'm hoping they see people's I'm hoping Andor wins some awards so that that tells Disney Lucasfilm being like, hey, hmm, this will uh we might wanna make more like in this in this theme. That would be fun. That'd be great. But yeah, enough of that. I've gone on and on. It's a great show. And I appreciate you guys being here. If you want to support the channel, my YouTube channel, and this video in particular, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Also, you can comment down below with your thoughts about the show overall, think elements of this episode in particular. That's great. And if you're here and you aren't already, Subscribe, push that red button and subscribe to the channel because that'll be the best way to let you know when future videos and content goes live on my channel. I won't bug you, bug you too much. I don't really have a consistent upload schedule. So it'll be a nice little surprise. Bing, when a video pops up, you're like, oh, cool. I didn't know, I didn't realize because I'm subscribed and it tells me, so that's cool. And then if you want to support other channels, you can support my Twitch. I stream on Twitch casually, occasionally, variety of content, just chatting sometimes. Sometimes I play some Star Wars games. Sometimes I play other games because I'm not just Star Wars, just like you too. So that's twitch.tv slash Zell, X-E-L-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Also, in case you didn't realize, I have the editor of the channel is my friend Son of Sons. He also has a YouTube channel if you want to support that. It is a YouTube channel credit. K-R-E-D-I-K. Check it out. It's like satirical com comedy commentary to Clone Wars videos. And I think he has plans to do other things in the future. So give him a follow, support over there. You might like and be surprised with what you see. It's fun. It's fun to see there's so many different routes you can go with um, enjoying and experiencing Star Wars. And I think that's one of them. So you should check it out. And that's all folks. Thanks for being here. And uh, you know what to do. How do you end these things? I don't know. You're great. Hope you're feeling great. Hope you have a good holidays if you celebrate and I'll see you on the next one.